Welcome back. Now, a UCT biomedical engineering PhD candidate has produced a nifty and innovative gynecological device. Now, it allows gynecologists to diagnose and further treat uterine-related challenges without using general anesthesia. Edmund Vessels, who is also Chief Technical Officer at VASMED Tech, says that women and girls can now receive the care that they need quite easily at a clinic closer to to home. Vessels joins us now uh, to have this discussion. And thank you so much for your time, Edmund, and good morning to you. I think before we get into the innovation, I, I want to understand some stats here and some background because this uh, information surely informed you uh, in coming up with this innovation, Ron. When we look at women and adolescent girls of reproductive age, particularly in some of the remote areas in the country or even in the, in the continent, uh, how much do they go through in terms of, you know, the global burden amongst them, uh, especially when it comes to sexual and reproductive ill health. Good morning, Tamilo. And yeah, what an incredible question to start us off with. Um, to give you background, this problem was first presented to us by the late Dr. Carol Thomas, who was an amazing uh, specialist gynecologist. And she presented to us this need of being able to perform procedures outside of the OR in both the public and the private sector. And when it comes to South Africa specifically, um, there have been studies that have shown that African women especially are more pre prevalent to certain uterine conditions, um, which means that in a country that's already kind of overburdened um, in the healthcare sector, we especially need devices like this to help alleviate that burden. Um, and when it comes to in the public sector, we know, for example, the immense waiting periods that patients have to go through to actually receive the treatment. You know, there's a lot of processes that they have to go through that essentially extends um, the period that they experience this burden of disease. Yeah, so in simple terms, then, how does then this device actually work? Essentially, it's kind of a device that they use to do a diagnostic procedure at the first um, visit. So instead of patients having to be sent back to the OR after the initial visit, they can actually, the gynecologist can perform an examination there and then when, the, when they see the patient, and they can actually diagnose and treat them in that moment, alleviating potential burdens that they're experiencing or diagnosing and knowing exactly what they need to do um, in a follow-up procedure instead of having to go through multiple steps mm. along the way. Mm. And I also understand that uh, also this innovation, which I understand it was co-invented uh, with uh, Professor Sudesh uh, Sivarasu, the director of UCT's Biomedical Engineering Research Center, uh, Edmund. Th this came at the back of the late Dr. Carol Thomas, a UCT specialist gynecologist, alerting you of a need, a gap in medicine to address this issue. What was that gap? Um, that gap was to be able to, to perform in-office procedures. Mm. So the gap was because so many of these procedures, and in her case, she was a um, private practicing gynecologist and was still performing these procedures in the OR under general anesthesia. And she wanted to be able to perform these in-office when her patients arrive, um, which is incredible because it's not only fulfilling a need in the private sector, but also in the public sector. And as you said, together with my supervisor, um, Prof. Sudesh Sivarasu, mm -hmm. We developed this device and it's been an incredible journey and we're really excited to see where this innovation goes. Yeah, I think also equally exciting is the fact that most of our clinics uh, have outdated old equipment and this is the innovation that we need at this time to not only move with the times but you know to bring more efficiency and to assist in helping these young women uh, as well as adolescents. Exactly, I mean if anything the COVID pandemic has shown us that we can't be too reliant on medical technologies developed outside of the country. And it's time we actually look inward and start innovating um, specifically for the South African landscape and the rest of Africa. And that's what this device is. It's a locally developed um, produced device that's looking specifically at addressing the needs here at home. Mm. Has it already been trialed and tested? We've done what is called the usability trial, which is where gynecologists perform the procedures on cadavers or on a model. Um, that's the first step to get the feedback needed to know exactly where the device is at. And we're now going through the process of raising funding to finish um, the processes involved for actually getting regulatory approval to then be able to do further testing and trials on the device, in yes. this case, inpatient trials. Right. I think equally so, it's important to note that uh, you have already received quite a notable nomination, Edmund, uh, with regards to this invasion. Take us through the uh, nomination, what it means, the 2023 Africa Prize for Engineering Innovation. 
Thank you, Tomelo. And yes, it's a huge honor. This is the biggest prize of its kind um, in Africa. And it's essentially driven towards identifying African entrepreneurs and helping them to essentially reach a point where they can further scale up or commercialize their ideas. And that's exactly what we need right now is that kind of partnership and expertise advice from leaders in their fields. And that's what the Royal Academy of Engineering is helping us and providing us with through this program. Oh, we and being shortlisted is yeah. definitely... Oh, thank you. Yes. No, you were saying complete your point. Yes, you were saying... Um, and being shortlisted is such an incredible honor because it means in the next coming months, we'll be reapplying all of the participants and essentially they're going to be choosing the finalists. We'll be pitching their idea in Ghana at the finals of the competition. And that alone, I think, is what we're aiming for. We're definitely aiming to win. Um, with our idea. Absolutely. I think the nomination as well deserves a congratulations. Uh, this is definitely one uh, notable acknowledgement and recognition that we can't take lightly. And thank you so much for speaking to me, Edmund. Uh, definitely just placing the spotlight on how innovation can help save lives. And also looking at, you know, women and young adolescent girls of, uh, you know, reproductive age uh, going through some of the, you know, ill health burdens, not only the country, the continent, around the world and doing what you can with your colleagues out at UCT to bridge that gap is Edmund Vessels, Chief Technology Officer at Vaz Medtech. Thank you so much for your time. Some people just changing the world on a daily What are we basis. doing? What are we doing? We're telling you about how they change We're, we're telling you about how they change yeah. the world. We're not doing we it. We have to be part of ourselves. Amazing. Well done to Edmund <laughs> Vessels. And I, I think we should actually follow up after those uh, awards right? uh, as well, just see how that all goes mm. as well. So all the best to Edmund uh, for, I, I mean, I don't want to call it an invention. It's more like a device. Mm -hmm. uh, but congrats to him and all the best for, for those awards.